Dyspnea is a broad term that really means that there is an irregularity or disorder of the heart rhythm. Now, our heart beats 60 times, 80 times a minute and up to about 80,000 times a day. And it does this very regularly and is regulated by our natural pacemaker of the heart. However, in some occasions, that process can go a little bit awry and there are some irregularities in the heart rhythm. And that really is what we mean by arrhythmia. So arrhythmias can manifest in very different ways from very, very mild to very, very severe. So on the mild end, some individuals can have arrhythmias without knowing it. So this is what we call asymptomatic arrhythmias. So patients have arrhythmias, but they are picked up really incidentally by chance when they go to hospital for another reason and they have a heart test and sometimes they find an arrhythmia. On the mild end of the spectrum, sometimes people feel some irregularity of the heart rhythm. So they describe going to bed at night, feeling a bit of odd sensation in the chest, a bit of irregularity in the heart. Then you can get a bit more prominent symptoms. People feel periods where they get a few hours where the heart is very, very fast or very, very irregular and it's trouble, it's very troubling for them. Other symptoms include uh, breathlessness, dizziness, tiredness, and all the way to the very, very severe end. Some arrhythmias can be life-threatening. They can lead people to collapse and at the very worst case can lead to sudden death, but it's a whole range. There's a whole range of different arrhythmias ranging from very benign to very serious arrhythmias. The majority of arrhythmias, and I would say over 90% plus, are benign arrhythmias that are not life-threatening, that are just a bit of a nuisance for some people, and sometimes they cause symptoms that affect quality of life, that we can find the right treatments to help them feel better. But a very small minority of arrhythmias are, reflect something dangerous and something bad going on with the heart, and those can be serious, but those are very small minority. And that's why it's important when you have symptoms of an arrhythmia to get tested so we can work out where you are on the spectrum. In terms of the cure, again, we have lots and lots of treatments available to help people with arrhythmias. The majority of benign arrhythmias can be treated very well and very easily. I'll discuss that later. Um, and uh, some of the more serious arrhythmias, we have ways of preventing dangerous outcomes like implanting defibrillators to stop the very extreme manifestations of those dangerous rhythms. Um, again, there is a spectrum of arrhythmias. Uh, some people are born with a predisposition to having it. So they're not born with the arrhythmia, but they can inherit certain genes that affect how the electrics of the heart are regulated. So over time, they then become more at risk. And these individuals with the family history of arrhythmias can have a higher chance of going on to develop it. So they're not born with it, but they're born with a predisposition. But again, the majority of arrhythmias are what we call acquired over time. So as people age and as the heart age and with lifestyle in terms of weight, high blood pressure, other heart conditions, all of these things combine to increase the chance of arrhythmia. So the majority are acquired, a small minority of arrhythmias are due to a predisposition that people are born with. But there's a whole range of different treatments for patients with arrhythmias. The first step, of course, is to get some standard testing to work out what type of arrhythmia a patient has. And that involves a standard heart tracing called an ECG, an echocardiogram to look at the heart function and perhaps a heart monitor. Once we identify the specific type of arrhythmias, we will direct the treatments towards it. And I normally say there are four tiers of treatments for patients with arrhythmias. For those with very mild arrhythmias that are benign and not worrying, we can sometimes leave it alone with absolutely no treatment because we're not concerned about it and the patient is not troubled by it. 
The next step is to have some medications as and when needed, something called a pill in pocket approach. So you essentially carry a pill in your pocket and as and when you get troubling symptoms, you can take that medication. The third tier is to go on to regular medication. So things become a bit worse. I say, why don't you try a regular medication to stop the arrhythmia from coming on rather than taking a pill when it happens. And then the fourth step is something invasive. So we can do procedures to try and fix this. And I do things called catheter ablation. This is the procedure where uh, patients come into the hospital for essentially a day case where we put catheters, which are long tubes up from the vein in the groin up to the heart. And using those tubes, we can find out where the arrhythmia is coming from and do something called ablation, where we perform controlled destruction of the heart muscle of the area causing the issue and stopping that from recurring again. So again, a whole spectrum of treatment options depending on the type of arrhythmia and the severity of symptoms. So again, it comes down to the specific arrhythmia, uh, but there are many lifestyle changes that can help with different types of arrhythmias. One of the commonest arrhythmias I treat is atrial fibrillation, uh, and that can respond quite to quite simple lifestyle changes. There's a lot of evidence now, and I do a lot of research on this, showing that weight is very, very importantly linked to atrial fibrillation. And for every five units of body mass index increase you have, there's a 20% extra chance of having atrial fibrillation. So a simple thing would be to have a healthy diet, and lose weight, and I see some dramatic improvements just with that. Alcohol has been shown to be linked to arrhythmias, and again, reducing consumption of alcohol in patients with arrhythmias can dramatically transform their lives and reduce their symptoms. Also, uh, sometimes people with sleep disorders, if they treat their sleep breathing with um, a CPAP machine, as we call it, that can also help with atrial fibrillation. So it's not just about treating the arrhythmias itself, but it's about treating what we call the risk factors. And many of those can be treated with very simple lifestyle changes.